Hi everyone, I'm Josemary from Molecular Cloud, and today we're interviewing iGEM ISER Berhamper, and uh, they will be telling us uh, more about their project and uh, some of the goals they have and impacts they're trying to make. So uh, would you like to introduce yourselves and your team, as well as your project? Yeah, so myself, I'm Gokul. Uh, I am BSMS uh, student, uh, which stands for B Bachelor of Science, Master of Science. Uh, so it's a five-year program, and I'm on currently fifth-year student. So, yeah, and I'm part of uh, Human Practices in IGEM, uh, Team IGEM by Isabel Hampo. Yeah, uh, so I pass on. So uh, I'm Vinayak. Uh, I'm a fourth-year student of the same BSMS course, and I'm also a part of the uh, Human Practices team. Awesome. Great. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your uh, project uh, to help develop an intervention strategy for dengue virus? Uh, do you mind us uh, presenting our poster? Yes. Uh, sure. One second. You can make me... Uh... You should be able to share your screen now. Uh, a minute. I'll share it in a minute. Sure. Uh, it's visible, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Kanya, can you take over? Yeah. So, um, hi. Uh, I'm from the project team. And so our project is all about uh, finding a simple cure for the dengue virus. So before we go into the details, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about why we started to work on the dengue virus. So it's a mosquito borne disease and it's spread by the bite of infected Aedes mosquitoes. Uh, but so why is it a problem? Because uh, normally the dengue fever that we all commonly know about is not very severe and uh, it usually causes rashes and fever, but eventually it goes away. But then in some cases it can progress to severe stages and the, in these stages, the body loses water very rapidly. And the problem is that we don't have any like well-established antiviral drug to, to treat it or a vaccine. So there are trials going on, but nothing has been commercialized on a large scale yet. And on top of that, the virus itself is quite complex. It has four different serotypes. And this is quite confusing because we are not able to develop a universal strategy for this. And in general, the incidence, as you can see in the maps here, it has increased quite steadily over the past years and particularly in our country there are states which initially did not have any reported cases but now it's spreading and so to prevent any possible like widespread outbreaks in the future it's important that we address this issue so what exactly is our solution so we are going to combine various in silico approaches as well as wet lab uh, the modeling part of our project uh, involves screening various protein-protein interactions. So this virus uh, basically uses a lot of different interactions between its own proteins and the host proteins in order to regulate the immune responses. And this is how it increases in its severity. So we aim to use these protein-protein interactions basically and design certain drugs that can break these interactions. So, and if, to validate this in the wet lab, we are aiming to construct a reporter system so that we can basically study the interaction in a human cell. And we can also test whether our drug works in breaking this interaction. So in the process, we will generate various resources. So as I mentioned, the reporter system which we will basically make by engineering human cells. And we'll construct a reporter which will help us to express these proteins 
and measure the interaction. And we, I'll get into the details in a minute. And then we'll use the same to validate our inhibitor. So if you can move on. Yeah, so uh, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, so the wet lab portion, which is basically designing the reporter, involves certain principles of chemically induced dimerization and FRET, that is fluorescence resonance energy transfer. So to say, uh, to explain it simply, basically the, we have two proteins. One is a viral protein and one is a host protein. So you can see in the bottom left corner of the screen, the diagram. And these two proteins are going to be tagged with certain fluorescent molecules, which will help in the visualization process as to whether they are interacting or not. But the problem is, because these are not going to be in their native state, how do we ensure that they actually interact? How do we increase the probability that they will interact in our cell? So for that, we use the chemically induced dimerization system in which we basically tag these proteins with certain other smaller protein domains, which are known to interact. So in this way, what we will do is basically bring these proteins in close proximity to each other. And hence, we can be slightly more sure that yes, they will interact. Now, uh, but since because of the pandemic, this uh, like, yeah, so this is a bit unlikely that we'll achieve all of this. So we are uh, going to focus more on the modeling part and I'll hand over to Harish now to give a give an overview of that. Thanks, Sukanya. Uh, so uh, Sukanya told, uh, yeah, it's difficult to do wet lab kind of thing this time and therefore we'll be mostly focusing on modeling and designing part. So in the first plot uh, in the left hand top, you can see uh, actually, it's the plot of uh, uh, like uh, in the top, you can see the different proteins of dengue virus. So the structural proteins consisting of the capsid, membrane protein, envelope protein, and the non-structural protein, NS1, NS2A, all those things. So sorry because it's a bit smaller anyway. Um, so uh, uh, like uh, Sukhanya told, uh, we'll be like, uh, targeting dengue virus protein. So basically, we'll be targeting non-structural protein. But why, you will ask, why not structural? So we did some uh, uh, analysis based on data uh, available um, uh, in literature. So uh, you can see like uh, uh, there are different plots. So four pl uh, the four plots represent, uh, representing the four dengue virus serotypes. So in each one, uh, the x-axis represents the position in the genome and uh, the y-axis represents the entropy of mutation. So more is the entropy, more is the chance that uh, there will be mutation and, and more is the chance that there is a huge selection pressure occurring there. So based on that, uh, you can see uh, across all the serotypes, there seems to be a consistent um, uh, uh, decrease um, of uh, mutational, uh, mutational uh, entropy over the uh, non-structural part. And therefore, we uh, started to think about non-structural part. So this was the evolutionary part. And now, as uh, Sukhanya told, we started to study uh, various protein-protein interactions uh, involving dengue virus non-structural protein and uh, dengue, other dengue virus protein or uh, host protein. So we started to study the literature and we built this, uh, you can see in the middle, it's the intera representative interactum. Uh, we built it for all non-structural protein, but here we are showing the uh, interactum for non-structural protein 5, which is interacting with various uh, dengue virus and human protein. So from that, we selected the interaction, interaction between NS5 and STAR2. STAR2 is a human protein. So we choose the interaction between these two proteins as our target uh, protein protein interaction. And uh, from that, uh, we will be, uh, we, are, uh, we, we are doing in silico docking studies to uh, build the complex. And you can see in the uh, right hand side middle picture. So it's the model structure of dengue virus NS5 interacting with the human start 2 protein. And based on this uh, complex models, we are uh, building peptide inhibitors. So we will do some chemical modification. And I would like to we'll be like, 
uh, be ready with the uh, final chemical uh, final peptide inhibitor sequence uh, uh, so that whenever the lab, uh, whenever we can do the wit lab we can use it for uh, repeater assay now also the major part of uh, our project is also like uh, why, why dengue virus uh, because i mean this covid 19 pandemic we need to think why to focus on dengue virus so we are studying various past trends in uh, spread of dengue virus and we are also building models that can predict the future spread of dengue virus so as to uh, give the importance of to know the importance of uh, studying and uh, making treatment for dengue virus so this is the epidemiological aspect of project and finally so the like uh, there is a difficulty in pr producing the reporter in wet lab so we are doing some uh, report, uh, modeling uh, aspect in silico modeling and some mathematical formalism uh, to demonstrate how our uh, the components of our uh, reporter system work and how we can use it uh, to validate uh, the peptide inhibitors for against the pro target protein protein interaction so mostly that they will be uh, based on docking studies programming and molecular dynamic simulations and uh, some mathematical formalism so this was some brief overview of the modeling part and now i will hand over to vinay for the outreach part yeah so the, there were a lot of restrictions placed upon us due to the pandemic that restricted us in getting involved with people but this led us to think of uh, novel ideas to get in touch with the major stakeholders of our project so uh, what we did was well, we did a series of interviews with experts in dengue research uh, medical medical professionals and also the r and d department from different companies so we were able to gain insight and a lot of insight and they helped us refine our project design so uh, as a part of spreading awareness about the project uh, among the general public through our social media and uh, via posters and pamphlets we we also love to spread uh, knowledge about what we know about synthetic biology so uh, along with uh, and I, another T IGEM team, the IGEM ISA Pune, we conducted a workshop for students on mosquito borne diseases. And also, we are contributing blogs and a series of videos on our YouTube channel and on Instagram. And we have also been collaborating with a number of IGEM teams in different aspects of our project. So, we did, a, we did collaborations with almost like a five or six teams, and a number of collaborations are now going on. So, that's it. And this is our entire team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, presenting your, your project to us. Uh, that's, it's very, it was very thorough and I think your project is extremely innovative and br brilliant. <clears throat> so I do have a couple questions uh, that I, that I have, uh, have from your, for your project. So I saw that you were doing the uh, first, uh, the resonance energy transfer. Can you, uh, to, in the, re, the reporting system, can you tell us a little bit more about that? The, it's the FRET system? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically uh, we need to uh, have a measure to understand how strong the interaction is. And there are different ways to do that but FRET is something which is very sensitive to the distance of separation between the two molecules. And uh, that is why we went for this, uh, that's one of the reasons why we went for this approach. So essentially we'll have two fluorophores. So these are basically proteins which, which can absorb light and emit light at a different wavelength. So basically they're fluorescent proteins. So uh, like Harish was mentioning, we have two proteins. One is a viral protein and one is a host protein. So one of the proteins we tag with a fluorophore, which is basically going to absorb light and emit it. And the other fluorophore, which is the label on the other protein, if they are in close proximity, it will take the energy from the first fluorophore and then emit at a different wavelength. So that's the way in which we know that they are actually interacting and uh, so the like I mean the 
detailed picture is that we are combining this with the CID system. That's the chemically induced dimerization system. So we kind of have a control over the interaction. So not only are we able to measure the interaction, we are also sort of able to control the interaction. Because what we are going to do is, as I mentioned, we were tagging them with other smaller protein domains. And these smaller protein domains can interact very strongly, in fact, if you add a certain small molecule to them. And if you vary the concentration of this small molecule, they, the strength would also sort of uh, get modulated. So based on this, we can have an entire assay, a dose dependent assay. So we can change the dose of this small molecule and we can expect to have like a range of interactions and then we can optimize it based on that. I see. So you use this tool to measure the protein to protein interactions. Exactly. Now, uh, I, do you also use this to measure the activity of the peptide inhibitor as well? Yeah. So okay. the second step is the, so it's like a, it's like one compact tool, which will enable you as uh, to just study a PPI. So mm -hmm. this can be any biological protein protein interaction. So it's not specific to a viral or an infectious disease. Anybody who wants to study any PPI can use this combined reporter system, but it will also help in drug design because it can also be a screening system. So basically the aim is if you add the peptide inhibitor, it will break the interaction. So we'll observe a change in the threat. I so, so it's a, it's a resource which can be used in other contexts also. I see. Okay. Thank you. And uh, I saw that you, for your human practices, you know, uh, that involve changing a lot about your modeling. And I saw that you have education engagement as a big part of your project. Can you tell us more about what you're doing to educate and engage the public? Yeah. So uh, we can't go to, we were planning earlier before the pandemic to go to schools and also the nearby villages uh, of our institute and educate them about uh, different aspects of biology and also about uh, spread awareness about our project. So since this was not possible, so we opted for online means. So we have an active social media, active social media handles on Facebook and in Instagram and Twitter. So we share uh, small awareness posters and some pamphlets and also some information uh, through our social media handles. And also we have conducted a webinar as I told uh, for school students who were from classes six to ninth or something. Uh, regarding mosquito awareness or awareness of mosquito borne diseases. So uh, we also made them to do some activities uh, with, along with the workshop. So it was very like an interactive session. And also we are uh, like, uh, we are also uh, writing blogs to certain, uh, writing articles to certain blogs and uh, also designing some, uh, designing some comic strips for different magazines. Excellent, excellent. Uh, those sound like really great initiatives. So what does your education consist of? Like, what are some of the tips that you're giving to the public to bring awareness to the disease and how to protect themselves? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are uh, doing the same. We are like uh, telling them how to prevent mosquito borne diseases, especially dengue. And what mm -hmm. are the like, how can you identify dengue when, uh, when one like have a dengue incidence? like what are the early symptoms and what we should take care about. And also we are uh, also uh, like uh, giving them knowledge about various aspects of uh, synthetic biology also. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, very great initiative to, to educate the public and bring awareness to the disease and, you know, what it could result in, yeah. what it could lead to. So I also saw that you interviewed with certain experts about your project. So what, what did they, or what does your team believe that this project might look like with further development in an industrial or pharmaceutical application or setting? Uh, so mostly uh, the, uh, we've had interviews with medical professionals. So that enables us to get a picture of uh, what's the scene there. And mostly uh, we have had a lot of interviews with researchers working using these specific tools such as FRET or modeling uh, molecular dynamic stimulation. So they have uh, given us very helpful pointers um, about uh, how to sort of um, 
change the design or or sort not really change i mean what would be better uh, what would be more feasible and uh, as far as r and d companies are concerned so uh, we did talk with one company who uh, so they have a lot of uh, instrumentation uh, for fret or various um, kinds of live cell imaging techniques and um, so we are planning to probably take some help from them because they uh, can help us in designing these assays uh, very nicely the the fluorescence assay so that's one problem that we have in our institute because we are an up and coming institute so uh, we can actually use this as an opportunity to uh, you know just uh, sort of develop the labs in our institute as well uh, because it can help us in the long run too so we might collaborate with them on that and yeah so our fret process and like so initially the entire uh, design of the of the of the reporter constructs they had some glitches in them because we we weren't addressing some issues like how would they behave in the actual cells so trying to make different combinations and yeah those things we have had more insights into them by talking to many professionals that's fantastic i think it's very uh proactive and helpful to reach out to these experts and use you know their feedback to improve or modify your process that's that's very that's very great that's awesome well is there anything else your team would like to share with our audience In that case, thank you so much for meeting with me today. Uh, IGEM team, ICER Berhamper. I just wanna remind the audience, I, uh, IGEM team, ICER Berhamper is still in our running for our Molecular Cloud and GenScript sponsorship. So please go out there and vote for them and uh, good luck in the IGEM Jamboree. Thanks again for meeting yeah. with me. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.